Today I'm going to show you how to create this landscape with ice, snow, and rocks. I was able to get this nice ridge where the snow meets the ice and water too. It was a lot of fun to create and I don't think it was too complicated either. So I'm going to show you how to set this up and how you might play around with it as well. And this is the end node setup. I put this on my Gumroad if you just want to buy the setup. And I've set up a Patreon where all the blend files for my tutorials are available for patrons. There's also some free ones too. But let's check out this texture. To set up our scene, let's get rid of this cube and bring in a plane. I'm just going to go ahead and change this entire middle area to my shader editor and attach that material that was on our cube to our plane there. I'm going to hit N and go rid of that shelf on the right. And let's change the top right to my 3D viewport. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Zoom in a bit here. Hold down Z and move the mouse up to go into render mode. Let's change the cycles render engine here and experimental and then GPU compute if you have access to a GPU as well. Then come down here to the material panel. And we're going to change under settings where it says displacement. It says bump only. Let's change that to displacement and bump. Then come up to the modifiers panel and let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Click adaptive subdivision. Click simple and uh, we're all set up. I'm also going to bring in an HDRI. So I'm just going to zoom out here and delete this light. Then come over here to the world properties. Next to color with this yellow circle, click that guy. And go to environment texture. And then just find out where you've saved your HDRIs. If you don't have any, check out hdrihaven.com. There's a bunch of free ones there. But I'm going to use Cape Hill 4K. Uh, probably only need to use 2K, but I've got 4K, so I can use that one. And then uh, come up to the top left, change it to world, and that allows us to see our HDRI and just, uh, you know, do some stuff with that. I'm going to hit Control T while it's highlighted, and that allows me to move it around a little bit. I'm just going to lower it down a little bit. Did I just raise it up or lower it down? Okay, there we go. Yeah, I'm just going to lower it down a little bit there, just by 0.1. Then click back on Object and uh, click back on our our uh, plane. We can start setting up our texture. So I'm going to start by moving this principled BSDF out of the way, and I'm going to bring in a noise texture. So some people might not know what the factor or fac is compared to the color. Uh, the fac is just the color if you run it through a separate XYZ node, and you're looking at the X output. That's the same thing. Here's the fac, and here's the X output. And you can actually get two other outputs here as well, the Y and the Z. So what I thought I would do is uh, bring in a math node and place it right here. Change this to subtract by hitting S once that's opened up there. And then run Y into the second socket. So we're getting X minus Y. I'm going to change the scale on the noise to 3. And I'm going to change the detail to 10. So we got get a little bit more interest going on in those uh, white areas there, those gray areas. And then I'm going to bring in another math node. And just place it on the X noodle here and just change this to multiply by hitting M while it's attached there. I'm going to duplicate this and put it on the bottom there as well. So uh, this just allows us to kind of modify each one of these channels a little bit and widen or narrow the range. I'm going to set this top multiply to 0.52 and this bottom one is going to be at 0.38. Next I'm going to run this into a displacement node. So I'll just bring that in just run this into the height. And if I attach this to the displacement on the material output, we can see it's displacing the mesh. I'm going to change the mid-level to 0.2 for now. And I'll leave the scale as is, but uh, I will change that eventually. Then I'm going to run this through an RGB curves node. And actually, I'm going to put a color ramp right before that as well. So why don't we look at the principled BSDF here. Um, actually, maybe the displacement node. It's just a little easier to see what's going on. So if I use the RGB curves node and you know play around with some points here, it changes the look of the landscape. But you might notice that you know if I move this stuff up here, uh, it's not really changing anything. But if I move this down here, it is. So yeah, something's happening there. Um, basically, the range is a little too narrow. When we're looking at this right here, we don't have anything probably above like 0.4. Uh, gray. So this top half of the color ramp, or RGB curves, pardon me, doesn't affect it because the range isn't there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in one more math node, place it here, 
change this to multiply by hitting M, and then I'll change this to 3, and now we have a wider range, and now the whole curves setup is going to be affecting my mesh. I'm going to reset this RGB curves node and just set the color ramp white value to 0.6. I'll leave the black uh, where it is at the bottom there. I'm going to change the scale to 0.15, make it much shallower there, uh, less hilly. The RGB curves node that we want to use looks just like this here. So why don't I remake this? I will put point there, put point there, and I'll put a point there. That's pretty close. I'm going to start setting up the materials just so this is a little easier to see. I'm going to duplicate this principled BSDF and then hit Control Shift, hold those down, and right click from one of these principled BSDFs to the other. It creates this mix shader. It's a Node Wrangler shortcut, so if it's not working, just enable Node Wrangler. So, what we're going to do is bring in a layer weight and uh, I'm going to come out of facing and go into a color ramp. And we'll bring the black up to 0.2 and the white, we'll just leave it one. We'll leave the blending at one as well. And this is just going to go into the factor right here. We'll just change one of these to kind of like a rocky color. Just go into camera mode there. Rocky color. And this is going to be our snow color. So we'll turn this all the way to white. We'll put a subsurface value of 0.1. And the subsurface radius, let's set this at 0.1, 0.1 and 0.2. That's just going to give us a little bit more blue because this is the red value, the green value, and the blue value. So we're taking down the red, we're turning up the blue a tiny bit for that. Let's turn off the roughness to 1 on both of these principled BSDFs. I'm going to show you what I did for this uh, rock shader here. It's going to bring in two noise textures there. Just bring one in and duplicate it. I'm going to set the bottom one to 100 for the scale and the top one to 40 and leave them both at detail 2. The control shift right click from one node to the other so we get this mix RGB this time and leave it at 0.5 and at mix. And let's just look through this one here and pop a color ramp on the end there. So this is going to go into the base color and we can just set this at kind of a you know light brown uh, color there. Maybe put a few extra points here and just move them around. Maybe this make it a bit darker. Uh, this guy here. We can set at maybe another brown there. And let's not have that at white. Let's just do like something like this. And maybe this make this one a little darker as well. Something like that looks pretty good. We can look at the principled BSDF, see what it looks like, and then out of this shader altogether. That looks pretty good. It looks like snow and some rock showing through. Then I wanted to do a separation based on these flat areas here. So I'm going to duplicate this color ramp here with Control Shift D. So it stays attached to the subtra uh, subtract node there. Well, let's see what that's doing. If I bring the white down, uh, it's pretty close, but it's not actually quite at that waterline. Even if I go to 0 0.001, it's still not quite there. So what I can do is I can just raise this up a tiny bit by putting a math node here and changing it to add. And I'm going to put this at 0 0.001, just like that. I guess it actually lowers it slightly. So then I'm going to bring in another mix shader here. Plug this into the bottom because that's going to be where the white is. We'll plug this into the mix factor and I'm just going to plug a glossy shader into that other spot in that shader there. We can see uh, now that it's kind of got a nice reflective surface there. I don't want completely reflective so let's bring in a noise texture. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. Move this up. Give me a bit more room to work here. Bring in a noise texture, place it right here, and let's bring in a color ramp, place it right afterwards. And we'll set this scale at 20 and the detail at 6. We'll run this into the roughness, and then we'll bring the black up to 0.4, which is going to increase the reflectivity there. And the white is going to come down to 0.9 or so. We can see that what's coming out of this color ramp here, you've got the black areas, which are going to be zero on the roughness scale, meaning smooth, and then the white areas are going to be one. So those are going to be our non-reflective areas. You can play around with that until you get the desired effect that you like, but I kind of liked the way that this looked. Let's turn this up to one. 
white. So the last thing I did is I made kind of a shoreline here. So I wanted to make a mask where it was flat. Uh, to do that, I just did something similar to what I did here. I'm going to control shift D both this add and color ramp there, but change this color ramp to point oh one this time. And by the way, this actually here, let's change this to point oh three. I found I got a bit better of a number there, that top one being point oh oh three, sorry, not point oh three. And this one right here, um, it's got those two points that are like right next to each other there. I'm just gonna move the white up a little bit, move this black up, and the white is actually gonna be at the bottom. So we're gonna have two black ones and then a white one at the top. So let's set those points. This first black one is gonna be really low at point zero zero two. The second black one is gonna be at point zero two. And then this white one at the top is going to be at point zero 0.04. So if we look at this mask here, you can see it's basically just this shoreline and the, you know, the frozen ice down here and this top rocky snowy area. Those are both white. So this is going to go into another mix shader factor. And this is going to go into the bottom while our snow is going to go into the middle right here. So we can see that it's you know colored this shoreline with the snow. There's no rocks there anymore, but it's still not flat because it's being affected by this noise texture here. So what I did is I brought in a mix RGB, and I put it here to kind of mask out the noise texture just on the shoreline. So I've got it right after the RGB curves. I've got the RGB curves going into color two. I'm going to run this into the factor. So something you know a little extreme has happened because this color here is basically telling us, you know, if you look at this uh, mask here, this is the flat area, and it's telling us make everywhere that isn't masked out uh, into that leftover shade. So we just need to turn that down. Uh, let's go back into camera view there, and let's just ease this down to 0.2. And we can see it's created a little wall here for us. That's our, our little ice area where the snow kind of meets the ice and the water right here. We could turn this up too if we wanted like 0.3 or something and this wall gets bigger. You know, it looks quite cool, but I found it looked pretty cool at 0.2. Now that we've got this set up, there are a lot of ways we could we could play around with this. Uh, don't be shy, you know, tweak these parameters and just see what comes out. Uh, there's a lot of customization in here, especially pay attention to this RGB curves node. Uh, this mix RGB, obviously the displacement here. And, you know, play around with this noise texture back here and these math notes here. If you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this was easy to follow. And thanks a lot for watching.